All right, folks, welcome to Nino's Corner.tv. This is Fluff Tube Worthy. I'm going to put this on YouTube because I think we're going to stay safe on this one. I'm joined with Sheila Holm. Sheila Holm or Sheila Holmes? Sheila Holm. Sheila Holm. Cool. Yes. Sheila Holm. I do an investigation, author. but I'm not Sherlock. Okay. <laughs> who's an author and speaker, an author of 18 books, and four more are coming. So she's got her hands full. Uh, that are coming out very soon. What we're going to be talking about today, folks, are the solar cycles um, and what they mean biblically, right, Sheila? How how these uh, uh, how this mean? Like we're going to basically talk about what it means biblically, because I know that I have a lot of people on here that talk about what they mean by with the occult and how they follow this stuff. The pagans follow this type of stuff. Both sides follow this the the, the planetary alignments and solar eclipses, correct? Uh, the solar eclipses, the messages are coming from the father. And that's what we're going to go over today because he's being very clear, but a lot of people don't know what he's saying. And so we're going to be able to show it to him exactly what's going on because there's a lot of fear out there. We want to dissipate that. There's no reason. First, folks, get your noble gold. Global financial storms might be raging, but thousands of investors in precious metals with noble gold are smiling. They know that whatever happens, their investments will be safe from the turmoil. Protect your savings from market volatility. Am I saying that right, Sheila? Volatility? Yeah. All right. Uh, with the Noble Gold Investments IRA and claim your free silver uh, virtue coin, talk to a Noble Gold Investments expert today, and they'll talk you through the, your options. And if you qualify, they'll guide you through your whole process. Uh, call 877-646-5347 today and take control of your financial future, or visit noblegoldinvestments.com. It's down at the link below. Get started, folks. You're going to need it. It's the only thing I'm investing in right now. So, Sheila, so like I, I've had some people on here, and I guess you could call it fear, whatever, but they talk about these planetary alignments. They talk about the solar eclipses, and it kind of, you know, we under I understand that they're being, the, the, the elites or the occult or whatever follow these alignments, follow these solar eclipses, and they go by a certain calendar. Am I right in saying that? Well, um, everything now is based on the Gregorian calendar. But what we're going to do is we're going to base it based on scripture because it it's exactly the signs and wonders we're supposed to watch for. And so it gives hope because that's what we have is hope in a future. So it all aligns with the truth. So, so it's an exciting process. So Juan had me call you today. He said, Dave, you got to talk to Sheila. You gotta, you gotta understand what's really happening here uh, in a biblical perspective. So when you say uh, follow the, you know, celestial signs and the solar eclipses and stuff like that, I am my mind automatically goes to the pagan elites, the occult, the, the stuff that they do. You're gonna change my perspective on this. Yeah, I'm gonna give you hope. You're gonna realize how great this is. You're gonna realize how powerful the the message is. It's very, very specific. Things are positioned very specifically. It's all being done on purpose. These three and seven years is completely miraculous. We haven't had several coming over. We haven't had them coming over America for many, many years. It's going to be 20, 25 years before anything ever happens again. And the next one's going to be a little bit over Montana and North Dakota. These have a specific direction, a specific message. And these three and seven years is specific as to what's happening for us in America. So... A lot of people will say, like, what do you mean what's been happening? We're in an economic downfall. Things look bad. Uh, people are frustrated. People are worried. You're saying no. You're giving. A, you're going to give a different message today in within hope, correct? And this is yes. actually everything looks very good. We're on our way out of this mess. Yep. And we, the people, want to be the ones to work on this because we, the people, have been given this opportunity of this amazing land and it's not about fear. It's not about how he's going to divide, how he's going to conquer, how he's going to hit. And there is always judgment. But when we get into these slides, you're going to be amazed at what you're going to hear. Because it is just flat out amazing what he's doing so, for us. So these are just going over America? Am I right in saying that? Are these oh, no, eclipses? they go all over the world. No, they no, go but all they're over the world. I understand. Well, I know that because yeah. it's an eclipse. But what I'm saying is, are they seen in certain places of the world? Like in America, are they seen better? than in other places, or is it seen equally everywhere the same? They go over different parts of the world as they travel. And we haven't had one in many, many, many years. 
And now we've had these three coming in three years. The next one is April 8th. And that's the third one that completes the message. All right. Can you see my screen, Sheila? Absolutely. All right. Let's get started. So I'm going to go ahead here. All right. Good. We're good. Uh, so this has a reawaken tour. Are you going to be showing this on the reawaken tour? These maps were prepared and presented to General Flynn and Clay Clark a year ago because we already had the 2017 and we were coming into the 2023. We were at Durrell in uh, Miami, Trump Durrell in 2023. And you'll see the date on the map says the 13th and it should be the 14th. A very precious friend prepared these for me and I didn't realize it was the wrong date. But the next one is correct. The third one is on April 8th this year. And this is the last solar eclipse. How much longer do we have to wait till the next one? The next one isn't for another 24, 25 years and it's only Montana, North Dakota. Uh, so it, it's nothing like these three. These three have a specific message, specific pattern, specific location. Uh, these three, as you can see in these seven years. So in seven years from 2017, it went from Salem, Oregon, far left. It went, swung across the country and went out the East Coast. That one went through seven cities named Salem. I'm going to explain this a little further in the next slide. And then okay. the second one started down in the Gulf. Or no, I'm sorry, it started in Salem, came swung down through San Antonio and ended up in the Gulf. And that the one just one, happened. That one happened in 2023. Uh-huh. On October 14, it says 13 on the map, but it is actually the 14th. I was on stage at Durrell uh, at Reawaken when that one went through. And now we're going to be experiencing this third one. And this third one is going to swing up from the uh, Gulf. The Gulf of Mexico is going to swing through San Antonio again and form a cross there. Then it's going to form a second cross. And we're going to focus on that one today because you see how that kind of looks like an X. And that's where everybody's getting it wrong. And that's the only, these are the only two people we're going to talk about. And I said, you can't talk about those unless you talk about the third one. And that's why I have my friend prepare this map, get it all figured out, put it together, because we need to know the truth. And the third one is going to swing up, go all the way up to Maine, and it's going to go through six cities of the seven. There's one in Virginia that isn't going to be in the direct path, but six cities of Nineveh as it scrolls up through 13 states in America. Wow. And this is happening April, what day of April? April 8th. April 8th. Okay. So, so can we say... What what are you predicting? Is, is it a prediction? What are you saying is going to happen when this happens? Other than, okay, it's a solar eclipse. Uh, a lot of people say big deal. Uh, you're saying no, 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 the, quite the contrary. What, what do you say is going to happen? Well, this forms a very special message. And this message, you can see it forms two crosses. That's a cross, not an X. And it's a cross in, down in San Antonio. So it forms two crosses and you see how it's a slanted A going across America. It doesn't yeah. continue in that pattern when it goes out. It's only in America that it takes this shape, these three. So what that does, you can see on the bottom right, it spells in Hebrew, the modern version of a slanted A, E-L, El Shaddai, Elohim. That's the highest Lord, the Lord over all, the Lord Almighty. So the Lord over all has put his design his name on our nation through these three solar eclipses in seven years and so i'm going to take you wow. through the 2023 or 2017 when he came when he brought this in from salem across you see how that one came across and then salem down comes across from the west he was reversing the curse in 2017 and brought it through those seven cities named salem there's only one state that it went through tennessee that doesn't have a salem the other six states all had, or seven states all had a city, Salem, in those states. That's incredible. Okay, so that's incredible. So I guess I, you just tell me what slide you want me to go to next. We can just scroll on to the next one. We can scroll okay, on to the so, next okay. one. Okay, mm -hmm. well, that was easy. All right, three solar eclipses in seven years forms two crosses in Hebrew letter L, the Lord Almighty, the Lord over all. So, yeah, you just went over this. The Salem, Oregon, Salem, Idaho, Salem, Wyoming, Salem, Nebraska, Salem, Missouri, Salem, Kentucky, Salem, South Carolina. Hebrew meaning of Salem. Salem is peace similar to the word to Shalom. 
Biblical meaning of Salem, origin Hebrew, meaning peaceful, safe, complete, perfect. Salem is a biblical place, refers to a holy city of Jerusalem, fullness, completeness, uh, symbol of wholeness, harmony, and perfection. So you, what you're saying here is this, by going through so many Salems, that means something. That That's that's definitely a sign from God saying exactly what. Yes, seven of peace. And what did our president also do to reverse the curse? He brought us back to the embassy, brought it back to Jerusalem. We weren't in Jerusalem. And then remember, they said it was going to be millions or billions of dollars. They were going to have to build a building and build an embassy. And it's going to take years and blah, blah, blah. He found a building, put us in it. We had an embassy in Jerusalem in a matter of weeks. He did wow. all of that right away. And that reversed the curse by bringing us back to Jerusalem. Now, the, here's the humor. You look at the word Jerusalem on that slide. Look at the look at the middle. What's the heart of Jerusalem? Do you see those three letters? U-S-A. Just wanted to point that out. Yeah, you're right. That's very interesting. In the heart of Jerusalem. So these are the kinds of things that he points out to me. And that's why you're going to love this. As we go through, it gets better and better and better and i saved the best for for the eighth slide so the first seven are good but the the number eight it makes it even better so in this i share about it going from salem out through san antonio then going from san antonio up through maine and these two crosses again that's what they form and the humor about reawaken it was san antonio that required 35 contracts. And when Flynn, I presented these in a, in a frame to Flynn and, and to Clay Clark in January after the 17. And when I presented it to him and they were so shocked, Flynn said, did you know it took 35 contracts to get San Antonio? And I said, sir, that's, that's grace. And he said, what do you mean? Well, five is grace and five times seven is 35. So there's mm. another seven represented by grace. And you're going to love that. It relates to the eighth slide. So all of this fits together and the message is all so clear, but we wouldn't be able to understand it without the Holy Spirit giving us the truth of it and then taking us to scripture. So, wow. and if we didn't know Hebrew, um, Hebrew was on its so, way well, out. So I'm looking at this right now and I see a slanted A. You're saying that means what? That is E-L. Down in the right corner, you see all the versions of the letter E-L in Hebrew. And the middle one is the modern one. And you see that slanted A that the that the line goes through? Yes. That's what we've got on America in these three eclipses. So that's like the Lord's print on America, his name. His hand is upon us, but this is this is so much bigger. This is so much bigger that his plan, he is here on this, and it's going to get even better as we go through these slides. I, I know you're going to love this. I really do. I'm promising you. Yeah, sure. Here we are. So here we are in 24, and now when it swings up from San Antonio and goes to Maine, there's 13 states, Nineveh in six. Now there's really a seventh state. Virginia is off to the side, so it's not really in the direct path. The others were all in the direct path. And the states that it goes through that it has is Texas, Missouri, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York. And so now remember the number six because Nineveh is in six. So right now our message to us is six and Nineveh. So the next slide explains it. This one here. question is, okay. It's much better when you... You okay, the, the question is, will we become Americans who are under uh, one nation under God, El, or the Lord of all? The answer is six, or, v, or Vav, or V-A-V in Hebrew. Vav equals relationship, connection with Father. Uh, what am I saying with that? Wow. <laughs> you know, you know, that <laughs> it's hard for me to say, too. It's Hebrew. That's why you got so me to read this, didn't like you? That's Ruach. why you're like, I'll let him do it. Yeah, Ruach, Ruach HaKadosh. HaKadosh. Um, Chodesh, the Holy Spirit operating in us, connecting us to the Lord overall. Now I know why you wanted me to read the slide. <laughs> and you L did great. You did great. <laughs> uh, equals Lord overall, the exact symbol formed by the three eclipses in seven years. It all lines up. It all lines up. The six. And you're saying this is going to be a pot. You don't think, okay, so I'm going to have to play devil's advocate here a little bit, Sheila. Mm-hmm. 
You don't think you're looking a little too far into this? Can't it just be, uh, I don't know, just the design that the three solar eclipses made and you're kind of looking into this? You see it makes a pattern and we're kind of, and, and, and I'm doing this on purpose. I have to say stuff like this. That's okay. There's more. As you go through these slides, you're going to get it. And, um, and people feel free to take pictures of these slides as you look at this and you can study them. It's just like all the other programs I do. I want you to be able to go and study this because the thing is, once we hear and see these things, then it's to take it to the father and get confirmation because there is a seventh town in America named Nineveh. It's in Virginia, but it's not in a direct path. And God said, it's in the direct path. Now six also stands for awful things, but he said, what I want is the relationship. And now here's the humor. In all the interviews going back several years, starting on radio shows and everything back in um, when these books were coming out from 2014 forward, I've been talking about all of these things. And every time I kept saying, if we're going to get through what we're heading into, we have to get tight with the Father. People have made me so many gifts with the words. It's a faith walk. We have to get tight with the Father. And, and it's on all of these messages, on all these gifts they give me at different events. And so they're getting it and they weren't hearing from the father because we weren't operating with the Holy Spirit. So now that more people are operating with the Holy Spirit, I have people in California that thought I was kidding that you could hear from father. But now that they're just asking, I want to hear from you. I want to know what your truth in the, is in this. He's pointing it out to them. And now, like four or five years later, people are actually having conversations with the father just like I do because he wants that tight relationship with us. So when you spend time with him, you want more time with him to get answers like this, because I'm just a farmer's daughter from Nebraska. I'm a simple person. I wasn't planning on any of this. I wasn't planning on being wrecked by FBI agents in San Diego and putting judges in prison and learning all the underbelly of all this stuff about what's happening to us. It just it was a path that I ended up on, but I never would have been able to get the truth of all of it if I hadn't gotten tight with the father. And then when I realized that, and I realized how many people are completely lost, they're just going through the paces of life and don't know how long they're going to be here. And if we don't do that, how are we going to come through this storm? Because it's not about him destroying America. It's about us. It's about how important we are and why he sent us. That's why they had to kill 64 million trying to come here. That's why they have cut off the messages. And you'll see this as we continue through these slides, you're going to see just how powerful Nineveh coming in peace and then operating based on Nineveh and what happened in Nineveh and how we were preserved out of that back in that ancient time. You're going to see all of this in these slides. And I only did this for you. That's why I worked on it till 430 today. So, so oh, here we you're go. Awesome. You're awesome. I wanted so you to yeah. have this. Nobody has this. So. You're amazing. Thank you so much, Sheila. I, I'm looking down there at these symbols down below. Yeah. Uh, uh, what, so that is the, the second symbol to the right. So the, the first one looks like the Taurus. And the second one is like the A, right? That's the symbol mm -hmm. it's making in America, correct? So it's if I look the at one that, we would, it was the one, it's the one we would identify with because we don't know Paleo Hebrew, the ancient Hebrew. We don't know, um, we don't know the other portions of it. All we know is the modern Hebrew, and the modern Hebrew letter is the slanted A. So okay. that's, well, that's why what it's we're looking at here us. in America. Yes. Okay. We would only know the modern. Now, when they find these things, and this is in my books, we've talked about my book series on our other interviews together. And in my books, I, I show the pictures. Um, they put the effort in and inscripted in heavy stone in New Mexico is where it was found. And it's in Paleo Hebrew. And people go, well, maybe it's just a mimicry mockery, but who knows Paleo Hebrew? You know what I mean? So yeah. they put the Ten Commandments in stone so we would never forget. And it was the basis of our laws, the Bible and the Ten Commandments. And now we've drifted away from that too. And so what he's doing in these messages with these three eclipses on these specific seven years, it's never happened, boom, 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 in seven years. It's like 20, 30 years in between. And there right. aren't so any major the, ones. So this is—is yeah. is this the first time in recorded history that we? Because I don't know. Is this the first time that this has happened, or has this happened before? Is this cyclical, and this has happened before a uh, hundred thousand years ago, ten thousand years ago? When's the last time this has happened? It has it happened before? It hasn't happened in a full sweep across America. Um, I think they've been like thirty years apart. 
there's um, there's nothing like uh, some of it for more than a hundred years. Um, we may not, we won't have another solar eclipse. Even a, um, they call it a full solar eclipse, but again, it's only Montana, North Dakota, and the next one. So this kind of symbolism, this kind of movement, these three in seven years, no. It doesn't happen wow. like this. Now they're happening all around the world, but I mean, in North America for this to happen. And we've only been here, a, you know, we've only been here a couple hundred years. I mean, the native American Indians have seen experiences before. Now this is powerful. This is so powerful. This 2024 eclipse, when it forms that second cross, and that's why I shortened the map to put this in when, when they thought it was an X, and I cannot even tell you how many people are like, Sheila, it's going to devastate us. It's going to break up the Mississippi River. Our country is going to be divided in two. And I just started laughing. They said, why are you laughing? And I said, because God told me when they divided based on the Mississippi River. And they did it to his people. It's not us experiencing it. They did it to his people. So it does pass over the Mass Mississippi River right down here in um in Missouri is where it crosses and it crosses and it kind of clips um, Kentucky, the, the direct path and into Illinois. And that's why I put that extra information in because the Mississippi River does form that line. If you start down at the bottom of Louisiana and you swing up through the country, those odd odds uh, border movements of those states, that's because that's the Mississippi River and it goes all the way from the Gulf from Louisiana swings all the way up and goes all the way up to Minnesota to the Canadian border. It continues in the Canadian border, by the way. And the difference that people don't understand is that the Native American Indians were actually forced out of their homes and off of their land and sent west of the Mississippi River after they, after they won their Supreme Court case. So when did this happen? It happened in the early 1820s that this was happening. But when did it begin? The court case, I mean, is in the 20s. In 1804, little known fact, and I didn't even put it on there because this is just for you, just for you, Nino, because you love this kind of stuff. In 1804 is when they started pushing them out. The chiefs were pushed out and they had mansions. I've, I've been to some of them in Georgia and they're beautiful wooden homes and people go, well, it doesn't look like a mansion. It's the same mansions that the territorial governors started living in and building. So it's wow. what the houses were at the time, you know, that they built. The from Indians the Indians have mansions? Land. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, they had mansions. They called them mansions. Wow. They were several bedrooms. They were two and three stories high. They're beautiful. And they were forced out of them and forced away. So in 1804, in America, that was happening. What was happening in England? Because England has kept us enslaved during this whole time. Exactly in 1804 in England, there was this group. They called themselves the British and Foreign Bible Society. There's no names. Nobody's been identified to ever be a part of it. But in 1804, they removed the Apocrypha from the center of the 1611 version of the King James Bible. They didn't want us to know how the Native American Indians got to all these other nations around the world. Wow. And I'm going to now the reason why I'm sharing this here is because you're going to love it. When we get into the story of Nineveh, you're going to see exactly who's being protected and why we're being protected and why we just have to we just have to stand up. Because if we stand up in truth and we align together because they can isolate us and take us out one by one. But us standing up and look at how many people are standing up. Look at how many people are fighting for this nation. Look at how many people are coming to truth because we didn't realize people just disappeared. They took them out. The truth speakers, they took them out. They don't want truth speakers on this land. They came in from Europe and took over. And this is going to be in book six, but on the 50th anniversary and the medicine they used was, um, was how they poison people. I, I'm not thinking of the name right now, but they, um, the medicine that they used was the poison at the time. And oh, uh, they, the Indians? They, uh, no, it starts with an A. I'll, I'll, I'll think okay. of it. Um, but anyway, they took out Jefferson and uh, okay. Adams on our 50th anniversary in 1826. They took out Monroe because he said, you've got to stop this infiltration. And that was the Monroe Doctrine. And that's what it was about. You're bringing all this tyranny that we got away from to America and you got to stop this. And they took him out in 1831 on the 55th anniversary. 
So I said, well, God, what happened? Well, when they were done, and now the Supreme Court case was based on these Native American Indians, they took out on January 29, 1820, the King of England, King George III, because he was the architect of all this, which is why Georgia's Georgia Guidestones that we've talked about was the focus. So they take him out, same thing. Interesting. I'm just trying to think of what that what that poison was. Well, how did they poison people? Even um, even people who weren't involved in politics and et cetera. It was a medicine. Someone in the comments put it in here if you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm just not thinking of the word right now. But anyway, so all of this timing, everything matches. And now here's the humor. Where this comes in, it comes across the Mississippi in Missouri. It's only Missouri that had a Salem and a Nineveh. Wow. Now, how really? powerful is this that right where that cross is, it's right at the Missouri, Illinois area. And that's why I put a picture into this cross. This cross right below the path of this is the cross you see on the right. That cross is known as the bold, bald knob cross. It's also known as the cross of peace. It's 111 feet tall. And so it's just across the Missouri, that, but it's right on that, that direct path. the location? It, the, this direct path where it forms the second cross goes exactly over this cross. Wow, that's pretty cool. That's Isn't interesting. That amazing? Yeah, that's really interesting. So that's going to go right over that, the bald knob cross, correct? Yep, and it's known 111 as the cross feet tall. The, the what? It's 111 feet tall. That's a massive cross. Mm-hmm. Okay, should I go to the next slide? Uh-huh. Okay. Now, and everything we've lesson. just talked about falls into the Nineveh lesson. So if you want to take this step by step, we can take it step by step because it absolutely proves, um, because what I put right up at the top, Assyria took the 10 tribes. They were known as the lost tribes because nobody knew where they went. And you're going to love it by the time we get down to the bottom. So I don't know if you want to read this or you want me to read it. All the lost tribes of Israel captive in 721 BC. In about 712 BC, Jonah resistance against the Nineveh assignment equals whale time. Nineveh was a fully Gentile city of more than 120,000. Jonah went to Nineveh with a harsh warning from the Lord. Message from the Lord. In 40 days, this city, the city will be overthrown. 120,000 plus believed the Lord's message confirmed through the king's decree briefly. Jonah 3 7 8. No man or beast eat or drink water. Cry mightily to God. Everyone turn from evil and violence. Jonah 8 uh, 9. Who can tell if God will turn and relent and turn away from his fierce anger that, that we may not perish? Jonah 8.10, the Lord saw them, they turned from their evil way, God relented, did not overthrow them. Nation of Assyria saved since Nineveh, Nineveh, sorry, the capital repented and aligned with El, the Lord of all. 100% Gentile city turned to the Lord, Jonah completed the assignment. Nineveh, Assyria destroyed 612 BC, note, tribes of Israel assisted by the Lord to depart by 612 BC, 100 years later. Yeah, so you boom. see you see, in 721 BC, they're taken captive. Assyria would not straighten up. So they were already there. And then in 712 BC, do you see what I mean? So yes. now taken captive, horrible king, horrible to everybody, didn't care about the people, kind of sound like where we're at. And so all yeah. of this is going on. And in 712 BC, Jonah like, doesn't want to go. So he ends up in a whale. So now he comes down to the bottom of it and he gets it completed. So what happens, Nineveh gets destroyed in 612 BC, which is the next portion. But all of the tribes, according to the Apocrypha, were brought out of captivity by the father and given new lands. And they've been all different places in the world, especially in America, Canada. They were the first peoples in America, Native American Indians. Uh, they're in South America, they, they in the lands. And it's just a powerful, powerful story. So now, now we see why Nineveh 
as what's happening to us in, in the next one that you were just starting? Destruction of Nineveh, wickedness of king confirmed. Uh, location of Nineveh today, Mosul, Mosul, Iraq. Mosul, Mosul Iraq. Mosul. Mosul. Mosul, Mosul, okay. It's on all the newscasts, all the horrible things that are happening in Mosul. And yes. that's what Nineveh, so Assyria is gone. <laughs> Nineveh is, do you see what I mean? And everybody yeah. kept trying to say, we know Sheila, Assyria is Syria. No, it's not. A hundred years later, Nahum is sent with another strong word because his word, his name means comfort of the Lord. He was given a prophetic word of warning for Nineveh due to returning to life as a Gentile city as before Jonah. So the Lord, and he scattered the people and, it, and it's fun. It, they're two short little chapter, two short little books, Jonah and then Micah's in between and then Nahum and Nahum went with that strong word and there was, there was no opportunity at that point. And when they destroyed it, it's just powerful how the father says toward the end of uh, Nineveh, or of Nahum, he says, you know, your people have gone. Who knows where? <laughs> I mean, it, this is the horrible thing of you. I'm done with you. Your wickedness did not end. You were horrible to the people. They're gone. And all those who served you who knows where they went? And so, but father got them out of there and got them to better lands. And so, so is that, so in relation to where we're at now, this is comparative in the sense that this will happen for us in America, correct? Right. So remember Nineveh. It's just like, remember the Alamo, you know, remember, remember what it Nineveh. happened. Yep. So this happens in April. Does it happen right during this, the solar eclipse or? Uh, is it just letting us know that it's coming? It's letting us know the message of Nineveh so that we will research this and we will understand because what he asked them to do and they did, they cried out to him, they fasted and then, and then they came through it. And when father saw them turn from their evil ways, and that's, that's starting the first book of for the sake of America, the scripture in that book was second Chronicles seven fourteen, And that is if my people, who are called by my name, will seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. And then it's repentance by doing that. And then he restores them because then he's going to do everything. He's going to heal the land. And that's what all this is about. It's not about destruction. It's not about splitting the Mississippi so that we're two different nations instead of one. It's not about any of that at all. It's about the fact that what Father's doing is revealing to us, his hand is upon us, his plan is available to us, and we've cooperated with the Gentile plan. And he doesn't want us to do as the Gentiles do. And so we've done that. So here's the powerful conclusion to all of this in what we're in in the next slide. And this, I believe, is slide eight. Is that right now we're living in Hebrew year 5784. So this is the year that we're in in Hebrew terms until October 3rd. And the five is grace granted by the father. Perfection is after repentance aligned with the father. It's amazing once you repent, how your slate gets cleared and the, and the feeling that you have about your life. And then new beginnings is mercy granted by our father. And then creation is we, the people sent by our father, now aligning with the father, restructuring a republic for America. It's always been about for the people, we, the people, for the people are forming this republic aligned with the father. And then when we get to October 3rd, 2024, the only thing that changes for that next year is an entire year from grace to grace. So the yeah. only thing that changes is number four changes to five. It goes grace to grace. So we're like sandwiched in grace to get it right, to help each other. Well, it's to going bless to be a new, it's good, but basically it's a new beginning. Yes. Starting October yes. of this year. Mm hmm. So basically, can, can I say that we're going to go through some more hardship. It's going to be what it is, but God's giving us hope. He's putting his name on our land to let us know that uh, that kind of redemption is coming. And, uh, and, and, and by the time we hit October, it's going to be a new beginning, a new matter. It's going to be basically we'll see Mr. T reinstated or, 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 i mean am i on the right track here kind of something like you're that. on you're on the you're on the right track if we just scroll up a bit and, and if people want to go because jonah's a short little book 
Okay, it happens. It slide, happens or? in the Nineveh lesson, the slide just above um, number seven. The okay. Nineveh lesson is what's so important. And how powerful that this would swing out through these towns named Nineveh. And it's not an X. It's not. We're not a target. God's not targeting us, destroying us. It's a cross. And it's a cross that passes over the cross, that passes over the Mississippi River, healing. We've never, we've never healed from what happened by forcing the Native Americans over the other side of Mississippi. I would agree with that. We did that. We put them on little postage stamp areas. And then what did we do? We sent pioneers out there and they did land rushes where? On the land. And then they wonder why the Native Americans got upset and a few of them got killed. They didn't know. They didn't know and what we had done. They killed all their buffalo. They killed their food source. Yes. Everything. Yes. Destroyed them, yeah. decimated all the Indians. Yes. But to be fair, the Indians, especially the Comanches, they were savages. <laughs> I mean, well, I know what Indian history. They kept stealing your land. And they kept yeah, I mean, what do you think land? the cartels get their get their uh, their methods? I mean, the Comanches were were worse than any cartel. They were doing stuff. I mean, I mean that's a whole nother that's a whole nother show, folks. But uh, yeah, study the Comanches. That's they were something. Um, mm -hmm. So once we did that and drove them off their land, sent them to reservations, gave them casinos. You're saying now is when what exactly now we're going to be forgiven for that or what i don't understand it, well god is sending us a message to learn from and so many people even pastors that i that i talk to uh who want me to speak in the churches they don't want to have the old testament involved i said why it's just good history and a lot of people in ministry have told me sheila it's just good history it's not just good history they learned a major lesson from this can you imagine that someone comes in named Jonah and he's so passionate because he didn't want to be put back in a whale. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be either. And so he goes in and he gives a message and he gets the king to put it in an edict and a decree and give it out to the people. And so when the king says it and they know that they could perish and they don't want to perish. And so they do all of this. But then a hundred years later, there's another message for us. We can't just clean this up now and then go back sitting on the sofa thinking that somebody else is still going to fix it tomorrow or next week or next month. This republic is an opportunity to live in, in pure liberty and freedom. It's an opportunity. And that's what the plan is on the land. And that's what the plan is for all of the people with the father. That, that is the plan. And see, Nineveh wasn't that way. Nineveh was a pagan, but See, what I didn't know until God revealed this to me, I didn't know the dates. I didn't know the dates of what happened in Nineveh. I just knew it was 100 years later. And God said, well, why was it 100 years later that's important, Sheila? And why did I have to not deal with the king? And just, you've had your chances, time's up, that's it. But I'm going to save my people from all of this. But it's not so meaning Christ is going to come back. It means that the people with him are going to be saved through this. He he brought the 10 tribes of the north of Israel that everybody said have been the lost tribes of Israel. He brought them out of captivity and took care of them. And that's when they came here. So could it could so, it be when we re, when um, when we pull America back and we pull the reins back and Americans have their voices heard? I mean, is it just the beginning? Yes. Mm. It's um well, look at how much freer we already feel. You can tell yeah. that there's been a lot of effort and a lot of work. Yeah. I mean, this weekend, Absolutely. I couldn't even keep up with, with all of the drops. I mean, it was just like, boom, 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 boom. And he said, this relates to this. And he said this a year ago. And, and he said last September, he said, in less than five months, there will be a major shift. There will so be a miracle. Major shift. A miracle. Right. And I thought it was September 27, but one of the people who follows my interviews looked it up and they found the video and it was in Somerville, South Carolina when he said it. And it wasn't the 27th. It was the 25th of September. So by the 25th, and that's within a week that we could see some major, major wonderful things happening. But there's a lot of things happening that we aren't seeing, but God will reveal them to you. But a lot of this has to happen so that it frees it up so we can have liberty and freedom on the land. That's incredible. Do I need to show any more of the slides, Sheila? No, or? you've. This has been amazing. You've got. It's all set. Boom. <laughs> That's the message. I love it. Uh, yeah. So this is a message of hope. We are going to pull America back. God has given us His His name on 
our, the way you're the way you're interpreting this is he has given us his his stamp of approval, his name on our country. We're gonna pull this back in in October. In October, that's gonna that's gonna be the shift. Correct. That's when the the shift happens, which yes. aligns with coming into the elections. Mm -hmm. Now, when everybody wants to know the dates, and I always say, if Christ is on the right hand and He doesn't know the dates, then I probably don't need to know. But we have come through so much. I, I know everybody's feeling lighter. Everybody's feeling of what has gone on. I mean, uh, when our friend was over in Antarctica and then nothing was said. And then as soon as he leaves, Iran is declaring all out of the blue that they have the rights to the property. It's like, yes. how does that happen? Yes. Then he goes to Chile and he just leaves Chile and they end up with this huge bombastic fire, just like Maui. How does that happen? There's a lot of shaking. Giving away of his... Uh yeah <laughs> his route yeah yeah <laughs> and you know and just saying that those things uh, they don't just happen out of the blue that i mean who ever heard that before that iran thought they had some property down in antarctica and that they had property never, rights i would have it? never imagined no ever. no but it's like it's being shaken up down there so by the way that we have property rights <laughs> as like wait a minute you know what i mean but none of this was ever discussed before and this is what the military guys have told me. They said, Sheila, as the truth keeps rising and so much more truth is rising. Look at the efforts you've put in, Nino. I mean, I, you don't probably don't see what we see. I see how you've been breaking through, breaking through, breaking through, getting information out there. And the more truth we get out there and the more people that wake up, because we can't change people. And there are people that are just gung, they've just been programmed so much. But remember when they left Egypt with Moses, not everybody left. They had a roof over their head. They had some food on the table. But what happened is all the future generations were enslaved. We're unwilling to have anybody be enslaved in the future. We want it to be great. I know you want it to be great. And this is going to be a I big I would have change. never imagined in a million years I'd be doing this. Yeah. Ever. I, I mean, but I am. I took the call. So uh, no, this is not something sexy that I wanted to do. This said, I, I rather I thought I was going to go into commentating, broadcasting, something like that. I would have never imagined it'd be this, and I'm here. So, you know why? I'll never know. forget one one of the interviews we did together, and you said, you know, the thing is, when you got when you're in the fight. You can't let the enemy know they just broke your jaw in the last <laughs> in the last round. And, and I got like 12 more rounds to go. And so I got to do it all with a broken jaw. When you shared some of the things that you have been through and you never stopped, you never quit. And that's why you're doing what you're doing right now, because it takes people who will not stop and not quit. Thank you. I mean, you could have easily said, oh, God, you know, I, I got a broken jaw. Can you get me off of this? You know what I mean? Yeah. But you were repeatedly a champion. And you didn't give up year after year. You kept going for the same thing year after year, and you never gave up. Thank you. That means a lot to me. Because sometimes well, that's you, how you're doing this. Yeah, but I mean, you you take a beating. <laughs> I'm taking a beating doing this. Believe me. Mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. people that come out with the you know that just want to bash you and beat you and troll you. It's pretty. I, mean, I thought boxing was bad. This is this is worse. This is much worse. I mean, you know, yeah, I had my critics in boxing, but this is this is this is a different ballgame because political politics. Uh, this is so polarized that it's like it's death to you. You know, like it's it's crazy. I mean, if people only knew the hate mail, the email, the stuff I get, but I stay strong and I keep going. I keep I keep pushing. Well, the tough part is there's a lot of bots out there. It's not even yeah. people doing it. It's AI. And boy, are yeah. they angry. I mean, somebody just asked questions of Grok the other day. I don't know if you did something with Grok, but people are asking. And I didn't know until Dan Scavino sent something. This is what Grok answered. And I'm like, who is Grok? And, and everybody laughed at me. And the whole room laughed at me. And they said, you and together, like in unison, like they planned it. You don't know Grok. I'm like, what is a Grok? And they said, it's AI. I said, are you kidding? And you know, now we can actually ask Grok questions. I never heard of such. I mean, honestly, I didn't know what Grok is either. So people can make fun of me right now. I didn't know who the hell you were talking about right now. <laughs> well, Grok is the I one. Mean, that I Dan's didn't know what a Grok is. It's like an Alexa, only it's on the it's on the social media. Oh, wait. Yes. Yeah. Somebody told me about this not too long ago. G R O K. Yeah. Yes. Wow, man. And I think it's, it's on Twitter. There's a Grok on Twitter. 
And Holy they're asking cow. them the state of our nation, what's happening in our nation? And who who is the president? And who's got, They're asking all these questions and sharing it out on Twitter. It's amazing. Wow. Well, Sheila, I want to keep this clean for you for fluff tube. So I think I'm going to stop mm-hmm. it right there. I, I, I love having you on. I mean, you're welcome to come. I know you're 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 very well researched. You're you're an author of 18 books. Uh, where can people go to find your stuff? I mean, I have here, I think it's uh, uh, hisbest.org. Is that, what, is that what it is? That's it. They can also go to their bookstores uh, several d- around the world, and um, they can go to Barnes & Noble online. They can go to Amazon online and get them there. Wow. An accomplished author and speaker. 18 books. So you're going to have you're going to have 22 books cuz you got four more coming out, correct? Right. Right. I got to tell you man, I, I I respect people like you because I wrote I wrote my book When the Lights Go Out. I did this on my own, Sheila. This is my book right here When the Lights Went Out. I wrote it all mm-hmm. on my own on my phone. I text the whole thing. And I'll mm-hmm. tell you what, it takes so much mental energy to write a book that I don't I don't see myself ever doing it again. Um I don't know how the hell you put out 18 books and four more to come. So I take my hat off to you. That's incredible. Like I, I, I did one book. I'm done. I'm, I'm like, that's so much energy. I had mm-hmm. to, I had to go away for a month and do mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. I, is that what's your methods in writing a book? How do you write a book? Do you just in your free time you do it, or do you do you seclude yourself and just go to work for a a, a certain span of time? How do you do this? I cannot pull myself away from life and how the schedule goes, except I have pulled myself off the road. It was 75,000 miles two years ago in 22, uh, and in 23, over 90,000 miles on the road, and I just had to pull off the road for a while because it's so deep now, and uh, and yet I can blame somebody. Are you ready? Our friend Juan, the night uh-huh. I met him in person, he, he didn't even know how many books I had. We had never talked before. The night I met him, he goes, you know, Sheila, you're gonna have a book six and seven. I go, no, sir. I, I was just targeted at Lynn Woods. He's the one that referred me. Remember, you guys helped set it up yeah, for him to, right. to get me referred. And uh, I said, you know, that it almost took me out. And um, and I've been poisoned before, I was there, but it's really serious. I got all the way to the top levels of all the secret societies. I, I, I Now that I've been targeted, I think I'm pretty much done with that. And he goes, I wouldn't be telling God you're not doing six and seven. And I'm like, well, how does he even know it's a six and a seven? Because we had not talked before that night. You didn't know so, that? On my way man, back Juan, to the, I Juan gives me chills sometimes, man. I don't know what's up with that dude. I get chills. Well, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you another miracle because I'm working on a really deep book now. And the reason why six, seven, and the second edition of Nation Restoration, those are the three, are not out, is that I'm working on the book to do the plan to explain God's plan because they've used a counter plan to destroy every nation. And now they've done it in America and they've done all of it to us. And I said, well, God, I'll put the scriptures in that people need to follow. And he goes, Ooh, not enough. You have to do a training manual so that it never gets to come back. And I'm trying to get that out, you know? So um, it's so, so, so deep. But, um, but before I tell you about that, on the way back to the hotel that night, I'm like, God, I can't believe he said I'm going to do a six and a seven. And he said, I thought you wanted to research the ancients with me because we can't find true history anywhere. We have to get it from him because he reveals to me how to find it because they've hidden it from everybody. And so I said, oh, God, I'd love to do that. OK, I will do a book six. He goes, great, because that's for number seven. That's how it happened. <laughs> And so now, and and this is how true to form it is, because that was 21. That was January 21. Okay. And so now here we are in 24. And it is so funny, because now it's going to be book six is in the beginning, dot, dot, dot in America. We've had all this stuff going on. So God wants me to explain how it all all came in and happened in America. Then number seven will be in the beginning, dot, dot, dot in ancient times. And then Beautiful. Flynn wanted the second edition Nation Restoration. I said, sir, it's just kind of my story. But I didn't realize how all of that infiltration has affected us. And I do know how it's all happening. And so now that one's going to be enhanced by this book. So I was working on this book and President Trump actually was quoting, I believe, my research because he brought up the Panama Canal real estate transaction, 1903. When he's on with Tucker, beginning of August, and I had just sent that initial research to Juan and General Flynn. Uh, Oh, you sent it to Juan and Flynn, so it probably got to Trump. Yeah, so it gets to Trump, and in six minutes, he describes all of it and says, but don't worry, you know, they gave the control over to China, and you know I'm his best friend, so I'm going to get it back. And he's just joking around about it, and I'm like, how did he know this? You know what I mean? So then I kept trying to get what happened to the land. 
Can't find it anywhere. Can't find the treaties anywhere. So then just a simple thing. God said, I told you to research it backwards because you're going to have to write it backwards at the same time. And I'm like, well, I put the whole format together and it goes one through 45. And that's how it's presented. And God said, you can't present it that way because you have to present it backward. So I, I called Juan and I said, this is going to sound really strange, but I think I'm supposed to write the book backwards. And he said, of course you have to. You have to write it backwards so they can read it forward. And the reason why you have to do that is because everything that's being done is being done backward. And you can't present it to the people forward when you have to start backwards. They can see this is where we are and this is how we got here. It has to be backwards so they can read it forward. I said, well, you know, that's what God said. I am laughing because, because he said, I thought you were going to ask me things and then get confirmation from God. You mean God already told you this and you're asking me for confirmation? It was so adorable. <laughs> but then what happened this week when I was just telling him about these eclipses, um, he calls and he said there was something he wanted to share with me. And he was still down in South America, I believe, and on his way to Chile. And, and I'm like, yeah. And so we talked about a bunch of other things. And he said, well, I can't forget what I called to tell you. I was asking what the what was happening above all of this so that they could mask it and get everything done. And, and he, he told me, and I said, but I can't find that research. And he says, well, I've got the articles. I'll just send them to you. That's the reason why I called you. He knew before I asked him what I needed in order to insert. That's crazy. I know. I know. And I said, I didn't think there'd be any way to find that. And I got said, I, I had just said just moments before, and I get this phone call because we don't do phone calls that often. I get this phone call and boom, he's calling me to give me the answer. And I had just said, I have no way to find it. I've done all my research. I've done everything. I cannot find, and I have to have that in order to keep going. And then boom, he has it and sends it to me by text. Didn't even have to email it. Just here it is. Boom, 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 boom. Like I said, I get, I get goosebumps sometimes with this guy. Yeah. Well, that's because when you're aligned with the father, you can oh. hear these kind of things. And it was the same feeling when he said that on the phone as it was back in January of 21, when I was just meeting him for the first time in person. And he, and he said, you know, you're going to write book six and seven. I'm like, no, no, I'm not. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I had just given him some of the books, but he didn't know about my books. He didn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It's always been you. that way. It's a weird sixth sense of this guy, man. But that's He's, what it is to be tight with the father. And that's what he wants. Yeah. What we just shared, that relationship, that connection. Because when you have that connection, you're not operating in your own wisdom trying to guess. Because Correct. it says again and again in scripture, if you're trying to do man's plans, you know, they're always going to fail. The only ones that stand are God's plans. And it's like, well, then why am and I every wasting time, all my every time, time doing I, that? Every time I feel God talks to me, it's a whisper. It's nothing, you know, except yeah. except when it was to quit drinking. When it was to quit drinking, it started off as a whisker, a whisker, a whisper, and then boom, next thing you know, I'm being nudged. Like, you got to stop. And if I would not have stopped drinking, I would not be doing what I'm doing today. Yeah. And it was annoying. I mean, I would constantly hear in my head, stop drinking. You got to stop this now. Stop this. I'm like, what is going on? I don't want to stop drinking. And next thing you know, I just, it was just, it was like a, a constant, like obsessiveness in my head. Stop drinking, stop drinking. So next thing you know, I said, I'm done. And then look what I'm doing. Yeah. I, I mean, there's so many things in my life that I don't understand. Even when it was like, when I almost died twice, the whole thing, I just don't, mm -hmm. I don't understand it. And um, being knocked out, I shouldn't have lost against those guys that were bums to the guys I should have knocked out, but I lost. None of it made sense to me. I, my whole career blew up. Everything it just said, now look what I'm doing. It's like, so I guess God had other plans for me and I just have to accept it. So it is what it is. Well, there's uh, two things in that. One is that's always my prayer. Every time I know someone, Father, I thank you for letting them hear you even when you whisper. Because sometimes it's when we're really quiet that we're ready to hear something. And when he yeah. just whispers it, it's so powerful. And I, I've heard... I, I don't have kids, won't have grandkids, but when you have children, if you get angry and you yell at them, it doesn't, it just upsets them. But what's really scary is when you lean in 
and you whisper. And that's why I'm thinking that's why God does it to me all the time, because I didn't want to do these things. I didn't want to fight these things. I didn't want to take on those judges. I didn't want to deal with the ages. I didn't want to do any of this stuff, you know. But when you look back, hindsight does give you 2020, because when you look back, he knew the champion you were then. He knew the purpose and plan he had for you then. And bringing you through all of that, all of that devastation. My dad said the last conversation I had with him, he he was he was he'd already lost his strength five days before I came, and I went back for a cousin's wedding, and I went in to say good night to him, gave him a hug, and um, because you don't wake up someone going through dementia, you just you let them. So he took my wrist and he told me everything about my life in thirty minutes, and at the very end, he said the most powerful thing he could say. Because I'd always thought all that devastation, all that crap I had to go through, it really doesn't mean anything. And I don't know why I had to experience it. Blah, blah, blah. It was blah, blah, blah. And he never knew because he was in dementia. And we only talked about great things. I never told him all the stuff I was going through. But God told him. And when he said, this is what he said, you think that all that that you went through is never, ever, ever going to matter. Nobody's ever going to care. Why did you even have to go through it? But soon, very soon, you're going to find out just how much it matters. And he died November 5 of 11. So that was like a week before. All right, and you. so all that you went through, look how it matters. Thank you. And, you and, to your, and to your lineage and how much it matters to your mom and dad. Can you imagine? I, I, I've not had anybody in my family who was a champion once, let alone multiple years. And oh, so well, I, feel, I still fell short of what I was supposed to be. I still didn't get to where I was supposed to be, but it is what it is. Um, not with the potential and talent that I had. I, I kind of self-sabotaged the whole thing and um, partying and all that came, became more important and it stays what it is, you know. I'm, but uh, if you would have continued that, would you have been available to be who you are? No. For all the people who who no. can, all the people can get it from you because you quickly take it to a practical level and explain it to people. It's brilliant. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. That's for damn yes. sure. Yes. I'd be living a different life. Well, I'm grateful. Thank you. Well, I'm grateful for you too. I'm grateful for guests like you who who bring it and help my audience absorb it and digest it. So thank you, Sheila, so much. And folks, awesome. go to hisbest.org. Hisbest.org. And uh, I guess you can get all your books there, right? Yeah, everything's available there. Thank you, Sheila. Bless you.